Hi, in this uh, CML video, uh, we're going to look at yet another uh, use case for external connectivity. Uh, but in this case, we're not going to actually do anything that is external. Instead, what we're going to do is use external connectivity as a rendezvous point, so to speak, to stitch together multiple labs. Uh, as you remember, each one of these lab tiles by default is standalone meaning there is no interaction between the outside physical world. There's also no interaction lab to lab. And this is great because it gives you the flexibility of being able to set up multiple labs with overlapping IP addresses, with different routing protocols, with uh, layer two features like spanning tree that would otherwise or could cause network disruption. And you can do that in a safe manner. But sometimes you do want to connect your labs to the outside world, or sometimes you want to have multiple labs talk to each other. In this case, I've got three labs for purposes of, uh, of the demonstration here. We have uh, customer A, ISP, and customer B. And each of these three labs are connected together, or they can communicate with each other um, through external connectivity. First, let's take a look at the ISP. So I've created this uh, simple little uh, ISP with one internet exchange point router in the middle, and that I'm using to connect the labs representing customer A and customer B. So the way I did this was I added uh, two external connectivity nodes. So I went over here, selected the external connector, and added two and named one customer A and one customer B. The configuration is very simple. I just left them the default mat. I uh, they're just going to be, uh, I'm just using them for the purposes of, it's a shared exchange point or shared point between multiple labs. The next thing I did was when I configured my uh, IXP router here, so we can see here that this is gigabit, uh, interface gigabit two, and this is gigabit three. So if I do a show run on gigabit two, you can see that instead of using DHCP, which would then give me an IP address that CML handed out, one of the 192, 168, 255 addresses, I've just assigned a static IP address to this interface. So I'm kind of using an overlay IP network on on top of this external connectivity. Uh, and this is the address I assigned um, for the customer A side of things. Uh, for the customer B interface, looks very similar. Again, it's a static address um, uh, for customer B. Uh, I did put a, another external connectivity point here called internet. Uh, and if, you sh if I show you the uh, configuration for that, you can see that in this case, I'm I've got a static address, but I could have just used uh, DHCP, IP address DHCP on this interface. So really what I'm trying to do here is emulate an internet exchange point where I do have broader internet access, but I'm not getting the whole BGP tables from the internet, um, but I am advertising uh, if I do the whole show run config here. So this is just the use case behind why I'm doing this. I am um, uh, doing default information originate, and I'm sending my static route out to customer A and customer B. So let's now take a look at customer A. So we can see that I've got a network in customer A, but really the important point is I've got this uh, external connector called internet, which again, just the default NAT configuration. And on my edge router, which is gigabit ethernet one, I do a show run at GI Gigabit Ethernet 1. You can see that I've got an IP address um, 192.0.2.21. Uh, it's a slash 31 address. And this is so I can peer with that IXP router that was in my ISP. So I don't think I have CDP running on there yet. I don't have CDP running because it's trying to be like an ISP. But if I were to run CDP, I would certainly see the IXP router which is available out this point. And then I'm also doing BGP over this so I can peer with the uh, internet exchange point. And the customer B side looks identical. So if I have, a, again, an external connector, NAT configured, um, so they're all essentially just using the same network. They're using the same uh, verb BR0 interface on the Linux side of CML. And on my uh, config, show on it, GI1, it's the same thing. I just have a different static IP address for the peering point back to the IXP for customer uh, B. And so that's it. Now I've got this rendezvous point 
um, where I can have multiple devices interact. Uh, this is the easiest way of doing it. You could certainly plumb a, uh, a different bridge interface uh, on a different NIC on the CML side of things, on the Linux side of things, and, and create a custom external connector just for that. I found it kind of overkill. Uh, the downside of this is if I were to sniff on uh, on, on this bridge, I would I would see other uh, traffic um, for bound for the internet, let's say, because again I'm overloading that uh, that NAT interface. I could see other traffic from other labs um, because any other lab that I put into that same configuration would see that traffic. But in this case, I just I. I didn't care. If you did care, you would want to um, create an external connector uh, node that used a bridge interface. So you'd edit, you'd do a custom uh, custom bridge interface that used a, a bridge that you define on the Linux side um, that you uh, would use just for a certain set of labs. Uh, in my case, I didn't really care, but you get the idea. As long as the uh, each of the labs have a have a, an exchange point where they're using the same bridge interface, be that the default uh, NAT, the v, uh, ver BR0, or even the default um, bridge zero interface, or any custom uh, bridge interface. As long as all of the labs you want to communicate with each other are using that shared bridge interface, uh, or that, that, that same uh, external connector config, they'll be able to communicate with each other. That's the moral of the story. So it can be that easy. You don't have to use an external connector just for uh, true external connectivity. Uh, you can use it for that, that uh, what I call the rendezvous point on the server itself. So hopefully that was useful, uh, made sense that how we're, we're connecting these labs together and gives you some inspiration on how you might uh, connect and use CML in new ways uh, for your own use cases. So stay tuned for uh, more YouTube use cases on CML. Thanks.